What's going on you guys? If you like wild game cooking and you like venison, you're not gonna wanna miss this. I'm gonna show you one of the most creative and best ways to cook venison, an adaptation of a traditional beef wellington with venison backstraps. It's absolutely awesome and the holidays are approaching. This is simple, easy, it looks great, smells great. You're gonna impress everybody that walks into your house. Stick with me. All right, first things first. We're gonna to wanna to sear our meat and I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper. We have a lot of seasonings that we really enjoy on venison, but I wanna keep this really, really simple because I want the meat to be able to speak for itself with this dish. And there's a lot of flavors in here that can kind of complement venison really well. All right, for this first step, I wanna sear this meat on all sides, top and bottom. And we're gonna do this in a cast iron pan that is just piping hot. I mean, as hot as I can get it. And I've lined it just with a thin layer of peanut oil and I chose peanut oil because it's really really high smoke point we do a lot of cooking with olive oil and others smoke points too low go with peanut oil we can get the pan as hot as we want it won't mess up your kitchen set off your smoke alarm the reason that searing this meat is so important is because it's going to seal the outside and seal those juices and flavors in and that extra texture is just going to give you another layer of flavor when you cook the wellington as soon as these come back out of the pan, as soon as you seared them, season with salt and pepper one more time. The reason that that's important is as these relax, they start to reabsorb their own juices a little bit, and we want them to be absorbing some of the flavor from these seasonings. While this is still hot, we're gonna take each of these pieces of backstrap and just brush some spicy mustard. I've got English mustard all over both pieces. This is just gonna add a little bit of spice, kick it up a notch gonna add a lot to the flavor. Set that aside to rest. All right, steak is resting. We're gonna work on the filling for the Wellington. We're gonna take 24 ounces of cremini mushrooms, uh, also known as Roman or Italian mushrooms, and we're gonna drop those into our food processor. Add about two cloves of fresh garlic. Salt and pepper. Mix this up until it's just really, really finely ground. Now we're gonna add some really good, really good seasonal flavor in here. We're just gonna put some crumbled chestnuts in there and then we're gonna mix again. All right, so these mushrooms have a ton of water in them, especially after you go through this blending process. I mean, you can see it down in here, right? You can just hear the moisture in here. So you're gonna come and put these in a very, very hot, a very hot dry pan, no oil or anything like that in here. And we're just gonna cook the water out of these. All right, we've about got all the moisture out of these mushrooms now. You can kind of see that they're starting to char a little bit on the outside of the pan. You're starting to get this residue and you don't have that bubbling, uh, kind of boiling water coming out of those mushrooms so you know that they're done. So we're gonna set these aside just to rest and to cool off for a minute. Now we're gonna add a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme as well, just to enhance the flavor. We're gonna line a sheet of plastic with overlapping pieces of Parma ham. And I'm gonna place the mushroom almost to the edges of the ham so that when I roll this, I don't have the mushroom coming out the sides. Then we're gonna take our venison, just lay that right in here, and we're gonna tight roll this. We're gonna use the plastic wrap to just fold this nice and tight. I'm just gonna tight roll it into that plastic wrap. Pinch the edges down, twist it up. So now I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it chill for 15, 20 minutes. So now that it's chilled and had a chance to set up, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this in the puff pastry. I wish I could tell you that I made this from scratch. One of these crescent dough sheets from uh, Pillsbury or whoever makes them would be fine. We just stretch those out on a layer of plastic wrap That's set up really nicely. Now, unlike the ham, we're not gonna overlap the puff pastry. We're just gonna cover it one good time, roll it around until those edges touch just like that. Can you see that right there? And then take the back of your knife and just cut off the excess puff pastry. And I don't wanna cut through the plastic wrap that's underneath here, so I'm just gonna use the back. Pinch these sides up into a little pucker so that our meat is sealed inside. We're gonna tight roll this in the plastic to give it a nice cylindrical shape when we go to cook it. We're 
just going to twist this closed on the edges just to make it really, really tight. Chill that for another 10 or so minutes. So, been chilling now. So now we're just gonna cover this, just brush on some egg yolk. And it's gonna help this, you get that nice brown color that we want when we put this in the oven. All right, so now we're just gonna take the back side of our knife and score this just to make it look really nice when it comes out of the oven. Now we're just gonna add some ground sea salt to the outside to help dry and crisp up that crust as it cooks. All right, because venison is such a lean meat, I do not wanna overcook this. So we're gonna cook this on 200 degrees for about 30 minutes. It could go as much as 35 minutes. We're gonna let the pastry be our guide. As soon as this gets that nice crispy brown finish on the outside, we're gonna pull it out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna be happy with this, I think. That looks absolutely perfect. We're gonna get this onto the cutting board, let it rest for just a second, and then we're gonna slice it up. Looks very rare. We threw this in the air fryer uh, on bake on 330 degrees for about five minutes and just put a drip pan underneath it. And that's, look at this. I mean, look how much more evenly this is cooking. Where we had cut, cut that one before, it was too rare. And now we're getting crispy on the outside of our puff pastry. So I love what this is doing for these venison wellingtons. Look how amazing these things turned out. This browned up a little bit on the outside because it was exposed when we put it back into um, the other oven. So let me just cut into this and show you what this venison is actually looking like. Here we go. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Look how tender, just amazing. Y'all, thank you so much for being with us. I hope that you'll try this recipe for your Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners. You're gonna impress your friends, I'm telling you, and you might just surprise yourselves. Thank you for being with us. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, God bless you. We'll see you next time.